Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. My name is Jared Beckwith and in today's video I wanted to talk about a story of an EEG I did this week. So this week I actually ended up doing a pediatric patient who was three years old. So we, we usually just do adults at our hospital, but sometimes we'll have some pediatric patients. But when I was a student training, we did a lot more younger patients and I was able to see how my supervisor is there handled those situations and different tips and techniques that they used for those younger patients. So today I just wanted to talk about what happened in my experience and yeah, it was, it was an experience, I'll tell you guys that much. So I was all by myself at first. So patient arrives and already in the beginning, I know I, I can't measure. Usually I measure every single time, except when it's literally impossible. Like for example, with an uncooperative three-year-old, if, you, if they're cooperative watching the iPad or something, maybe you can measure and they're not bothered by it. Yeah, measure, make sure everything's exactly perfect down to the centimeter. But on this one, I kind of knew. So first, when I started off, since I wasn't able to measure, I took my prep and my Q-tips and I just tried to scrub CZ, try to get CZ on just so I have a nice land bark. Uh, that way I'll have the center of the head marked and I could just go from there. Just start with my midline and from there. But when I started scrubbing, or didn't even really get to scrub at all, I just was barely touching the the kid's head with the Q-tips, started screaming, no, no, ah, and then started crawling away. And then I was like, oh my Lord, what am I gonna do, man? I, I haven't even got one wire on. They, we literally just started. The kid was not laying down on the towel roll like a normal patient, they were sitting up. So I had to come up with a backup plan. So usually at hospitals that do pediatric patients, let me know in the comments if you guys do, cause my hospital is mostly adults. So let me know some tips and techniques you guys got. But we have different toys and things that the little kids can play with to distract them during the hookup of the EEG or and during the recording as well. I'll show you this picture of stuff that we had at our hospital. We had like a coloring book, some Legos. And another thing that works well is an iPad or some type of tablet so where they can just watch some type of uh, YouTube video or television to distract them during the hookup because if I was three years old and someone was scratching my head with some Q-tips and putting wires on me, I'd probably be screaming too as well. So, you know, you gotta have some empathy for the, uh, for the toddlers here. So I understand why, they, why a lot of them don't really like it. But a good thing at my hospital, we have what is called a child life specialist who helps us out when we have a difficult toddler who isn't cooperating as well as we'd like because obviously it's kind of like a big traumatic experience for them getting some touch in their head and putting all these wires on. So the child life specialist comes in, she brings different toys, she brings an iPad, and her job is to pretty much distract the kid, play with the kid. It's it's unbelievable how good she was. Uh, I was. By myself, I do not think I would be able to have gotten all those wires on. So with uh, the child life specialist, I was able to just slowly, one by one, that every, every time I touched the, uh, scrub the child's head, they would scream no or just look away or whatever. But slowly, I tried to be as gentle as possible, as quickly as possible. I was able to get the electrodes on, but I wasn't able to get all the electrodes on. For example, once I got to A1 and A2, um, I noticed that like behind the ear, that was like a super sensitive area for the child. And me and the child life specialist, we decided, yeah, uh, we'll, we'll just get on as many wires as we can. A1 and A2, we could skip that if the child's really, uh, cause I tried multiple times to put it on, but the, the, the child was may, one much more sensitive behind the ears compared to on top of the head wires. Those were a little bit easier once the child was distracted. So, I wasn't able to get A1, A2, I wasn't able to get T1, T2, which we usually use on all of our patients, good at finding temporal lobe abnormalities. Wasn't able to get the EKGs on either, but I got generally the complete 1020 system on the head of the patient, and it was supposed to be an extended two hour recording, but I was not able to do that, which is unfortunate. So, started recording, I tried to wrap the child's head, uh, 
did it for a little bit, um, worked for a little bit, then it eventually came off. Wires started coming off. I started fixing them one by one when whenever they fell off, because I'd be watching the EEG and you can see when uh, wires fall off. Uh, the impedances weren't the best. Probably under uh, 20,000 ohms was like maybe the highest, but it's, it's okay, at least in this situation. Um, wires kept coming off. Tried to keep putting them back on. About like 40 minutes into it, the uh, the EEG, too many wires were off and it was like you were getting no data. So I decided to just end the test there. Uh, I also was not able to do hyperventilation, which is pretty important uh, procedure to do on young kids, people who have absence seizures. They're usually younger children. Um, and hyperventilation can actually provoke one of those seizures. And when, once you see one of those seizures on the EEG, you're supposed to ask the kid while they're having the seizure, while you see the three hertz spike wave on the EEG, ask them a code word, tell them like blue dog or pink panda or something like that. And then after the absence seizure, you should ask them if they remembered the code word. And they won't be able to because they will then have just staring off into space and unconscious during that time. That's why it's good to test with a code word if you can provoke an absence seizure with hyperventilation. That was actually the first seizure that I was able to capture on an EEG while working as an EEG technologist all by myself full time. So very exciting guys. That's one exciting thing about uh, pediatric patients. You can see seizures on the EEG absence seizures. So how can you get a pediatric patient to hyperventilate? Well, one trick that is used at multiple hospitals is a pinwheel. We will take a pinwheel and we'll try and encourage the child to blow on the pinwheel over and over again. Tell them to keep it spinning, keep it spinning, keep blowing. And sometimes that'll work if they're a little bit older than three. This one was a little bit too young. They couldn't really uh, cooperate with it, so unfortunately. But another technique I think is bubbles. We can have them blow bubbles over and over again, just blowing bubbles. So that's another way to get a young pediatric patient to hyperventilate and perform that activation procedure so you have the best record possible for the doctor. So I was a little disappointed in this scenario that I wasn't able to get the extended two hour EEG and it kind of looked messy, but considering the circumstances, the child was very uncooperative, did not like it at all. Uh, they were not having a good time at all. So probably better that we just ended it as it was. I got the best record possible. That's all you can do as an EEG technologist, just do your best. And that's what I did, guys. So one last technique I wanna discuss before I go, cause it's getting a little bit dark, almost eight o'clock here. I've been working all day. Uh, if it's a very young patient, maybe like one year old, you can kind of swaddle the patient, kind of like wrap them up in blankets so that way they're not running around. That's, that's very good for patients who are very young maybe like a year old probably that works best uh if they're crying and uncooperative which they're gonna be you know they're ba they're babies you know you, you can't expect them to cooperate while you're messing with them constantly they're not gonna like that but let's just try to make it as good as possible for the patients best patient experience possible that's always the goal right in healthcare the most important person is the patient in business the most important person is the customer that's that's all I got for you guys today. Make sure you hit the like button. I really appreciate it. Leave in the comments down below if you have any tips or tricks with pediatric patients because I don't do them all the time. So if you guys have any advice for me, I would really appreciate it. I'm sure other people will see it as well and they will love your advice. So thank you all for watching. Make sure you hit the like button again. I appreciate it. I'm going home.